Hi everyone, welcome back to another great interview series. My name is Meher and I have the privilege to interview Chester Hilton Alton today. How are you, Chester? Doing well, Meher. Glad to see you're feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So Chester has spent two decades helping clients engage their employees in organizational strategy, vision and values. In his inspiring and always entertaining talks, uh, Elton provides real solution for leaders looking to build culture, manage change, and drive innovation. He also is a, uh, he has multiple uh, awards and uh, author of multiple uh, books. The, the most famous, uh, The Carrot Principle and The Best Team Wins. His books have been translated into 30 languages and have been more than 1.5 million copies. Uh, again, thank you, Chester, for being here. My first question for you is, in terms of company cultures, why it's important these days to have a company culture that can be transparent beyond companies' walls? Nowadays, that everyone is working from home and things have changed and the teams are dispersed all over the world. You know, great question. I, I think right now, more than ever, particularly with people working from home, that transparency and information is critical. You know, we, uh, I always say we, I have a co-author, Adrian Gostick, who is, is the brilliant writer behind all our books. And uh, I often say I'm, I'm Robin to his Batman. Um, you know, the idea of this transparency and communication is so critical because as you're working from home and you don't have the opportunity to stop into someone's office or gather a group together spontaneously, when there is a communication void, that void gets filled with rumor, innuendo, and fear. None of those are productive, as you might guess. So as we do a lot of executive coaching, we coach our executives to say, look, when you think you're over communicating, you've probably got it about right. Yeah. So whenever there's any kind of transition or crisis or pandemic, right, communication needs to go up. And, and clearly for it to go up, there needs to be that transparency. People need to trust that what you're telling them is, is, is what you know. The second thing that needs to go up exponentially in my hair, which we found fascinating, is expressions of gratitude. People need to feel like what they do matters, that they make a difference. And when they make a difference, it's noticed and it's celebrated. Those simple little things, a quick call, a little note in the mail, a text, hey, I appreciate your sacrifice. Because it is so out of the norm, you know, whether you're homeschooling kids or taking care of an aged parent or whatever it might be, those simple affirmations go such a long way to keeping your people engaged. So two things, always say that communication, as you mentioned, transparency goes way up. Simple expressions of gratitude need to go up as well. I totally agree with you. And do you think that uh, leaders should be trained in terms of doing gr those gratitude? And some of the leaders were kind of resistant, allowing people to work from home. But we've seen that within 72 hours, people are working from and they are productive. So what, what can you say about that? Yeah, I, I, I think everything is learned. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, the guy was a born doctor. Well, did he deliver himself? I don't think so. Um, so any kind of coaching that you can give uh, leaders along the lines of communication and gratitude, I think, are essential. Often we put people in positions of leadership with very little uh, training or education. And so I think, you know, when you have mentors, when you have a place to go, Certainly, you know, our latest book on, on leading with gratitude is a roadmap as to how you kind of do that. And we, 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 we constructed it in a very specific way, first and foremost, to realize there's a gratitude gap. You know, most leaders think they're really good at gratitude. You know, almost 70% when we asked, do you think you're above average in expressions of gratitude? They said, oh, yes, I am. Well, only 23% of their direct reports agreed with them, <laughs> you know? So there's this gratitude gap. And then there are the myths, mm -hmm. right, as to why it's not important. Like, it's, it's all about compensation. Uh, people need too much uh, recognition and gratitude. Or, you know, my, my favorite, I don't have time. You know, in other words, it's a nice to have, not a must have. Well, particularly when you go through any kind of trauma or crisis, it's not a nice to have. It's a must have. Must have. And it's not a soft skill to be discarded. Mm -hmm. It's a hard skill. So, so then we very carefully went in and said, look, here are some of the greatest leaders we've had the privilege to know. Here's how they do it. You can do it too. And it comes down to seeing what's going on, appreciating you know, the effort that your people are, are, are putting forth, and then expressing it in a way 
that's meaningful to them. And so, yeah, it's very simple training. It's very straightforward and incredibly effective. Thank you for those great tips, uh, Chester. Uh, I appreciate that. And for the audience or people watching for the first time, I'm going to ask Chester a couple of questions and they will be posted on the following week. So you'll be like a journey with us. You can like any of the videos, leave comment, uh, reach to us to our social platforms. We are here to help you. And tune in next time for another great question with Chester.